team who requested uh, Ron Munaki, Presley Mbaiwa, Tawana Manyanga. They make up the front row. The second row is made up of Toby Obi, Tinashe Nyamute, and the loose trio of Simba Nyemba. Uh, CBC are doing their walk right now. Number seven, Washington Kuwana, and number eight, Tinashe Mukono. Half back is Progress Matenda, and he'll be partnering with Asha Ngumayo in the uh, number 10 position. The wingers are Tendai Garikai and No Macherenga. And the midfield uh, pairing is Blessing Amon Dube and Tino Marara. And at the back will be Darren Chakirai. So that's uh, the Hillcrest team that will be taking on CBC here. And CBC will be giving you that team list as soon as we get it. But it will be CBC to kick off in their bright yellow and green. And they send it pretty deep here. But Hillcrest do manage to secure that ball. Uh, they'll be playing in that majority white jersey. Bit of a slip there from the halfback but gets back onto his feet early, early, early time here in the game for Hillcrest. But it is Progress Matenda who goes to ground eventually. And good pressure here from CBC. They obviously also were part of uh, the many Zim schools that went to the Krugersdorp Festival down in South Africa. And you can tell they get an early penalty here to CBC, who are looking fairly big and physical uh, early on in this game. But uh, Tino is back. Tino is back in the commentary box. He's had his coffee and uh, he's back. Uh, Tino so far, CBC with a fantastic start to this game. I was mentioning earlier that they went to the Kruger's Dorp Festival. So they've had a lot of game time. They've prepared, obviously, and are looking for a much better season than they did last year. Yeah, yeah. We're expecting uh, to see them play much better than last year. And it seems like uh, they've got uh, a balanced uh, team. And uh, very balanced is that mall as they start rolling forward. They're looking to drive it all the way into the ingle area. It's a break there, but Hillcrest have defended it fairly well here. And they've set up now, and they send it to the back line who are hungry for the ball. Uh, it's a good attack there. And uh, tackled in midfield, they change attacking lines to their number five, who's a big, strong lad as well. And he's got that offload in contact into the corner step inside and it's try time fantastic start here from cbc really really showing that they want this and you can see the body language they're jogging back to the halfway line because they want to keep applying pressure hillcrest under the ropes early on here tino yes uh hillcrest under the ropes and uh they've put five points on the board and uh with a conversion to come Oh, I think uh, these are early warning signs here for Hillcrest. And for anyone else who's going to be playing against CBC, I think uh, they want to have a good 2023 season here. Uh, they, they mean business. And quite interesting here, it looks like it's a forward taking their kicks. <laughs> Not often you see number five uh, taking kicks. Eh? Uh, I don't think uh, Bucky's Botta or Sam Whitelock or Eben Etzebeth uh, could kick, but uh, he's obviously got... Uh, the technique and the skill set to do so so fantastic why not you know yeah it's uh very interesting to see a a, a number five taking the kick oh uh, you missed it uh it went uh wide but uh yeah very interesting yeah, uh he actually can kick uh i think just lacking in terms of direction there but uh he had plenty behind it uh, did the number five from cbc so early on uh cbc scoring a try here can uh, the Hillcrest side hit back here and get a five-pointer of their own? Looking good, uh, Hillcrest in there. White and uh, polka dot, almost like uh, blue jerseys. Um, Kick-off not really high and hanging, more like a flat kick. Always tricky when it bounces. A rugby ball is not very friendly when it bounces, but CBC showing their razzle-dazzle in attack yet again. Set it up in their own half. Looking to just be patient at attack, and they get the penalty. I think early on, Tino, it's clear to see that uh, CBC have played a lot more rugby than Hillcrest. Yes, uh, it, it shows that uh, they are going to be a strong side uh, to watch out for uh, this season. Let's see how the season unfolds. And starting to arrive are uh, uh, players from Churchill and... Uh, Lomagandi, that will be the next game. Uh, that that has 
entertainment written all over it, doesn't it, Tino? Churchill, yeah. Loma Gandhi, uh, yeah, it's going to be Falcon, an St. George's, uh, St. John's PE. I mean, it's Zimbabwe schoolboy rugby at its best, isn't it? Yeah, it, uh, Zimbabwe schoolboy rugby at its best, uh, seeing uh, some uh, big schools with the uh, uh, history of rugby uh, playing together and uh, we see uh, Ukraine winning the line out there and oh, penalized for not releasing. And uh, both sides had uh, a good uh, season last year. I'm still talking about Churchill and Loma Gandhi. Uh, both sides had a very good season last year. Loma Gandhi will be uh, looking to make a statement as our CBC going forward yet again. Rate of knots, but not managing to get uh, the passes to work out there. But they are lethal in attack, aren't they, Tino? Yeah, they are lethal in attack, and uh, we know what they can do in attack. They've got the pace and they've got the experience. Uh, these guys are looking great. Uh, and uh, the CBC off from Bulawayo, so it's nice to see that there's another school from uh, Bulawayo that's playing some good rugby because uh, in the last couple of years it's been Falcon, Falcon, Falcon and Falcon. But it's good to hear that CBC and uh, it's good to hear that Milton. I see there's a lot of progress that's been happening at Milton as well. Uh, so that's another school in Bulawayo. And the more schools that are playing good rugby, the better our rugby will be as, as, as a country, isn't it? Yeah, uh, the more schools... Uh uh, play good rugby, the more we will get uh, a competition, uh, even the more we will have a pool to select from on our national uh, under 20, under 19, under 17, under under 16 and under under 14 also to Absolutely. select from. Absolutely. Yeah. We, we, we represent, uh, the, these teams represent Zimbabwe at uh, the South African Interprovincial Tournaments, the, the Craven Week, and uh, it's just good to see that uh, not only are, are we having more schools playing rugby, but when it comes to the national stage, our teams are winning trophies, which we've, uh, I mean, alluded to already, the under-20s, without sounding like a broken record. But here, Hillcrest want to hit back immediately. It was a quick tap and a loose tackle there, but he's isolated a little bit. CBC really need to scramble here in defense. It's good support play from Hillcrest. Hillcrest, unfortunately, uh, getting a penalty against them. But wow, just turning defense immediately into attack. Hillcrest showing that hang on here cbc we can play yes they are, they are showing that they they can play and also they want to uh to score some tries and put the points on the board oh it's the boys from manika land playing against the boys from matabili land this is like an, an interprovincial match on its own but yeah. uh, so far matabili land are saying hang on we've got this because we're five points to the better It was a good break there from Progress Matenda. He just took it quickly and he was going, managed to break a couple of tackles, beat one, beat two defenders in the end, put to ground, but uh, yep, didn't quite work out for them. CBC, line out time, they get it back and I think uh, another piece, oh, <laughs> what a piece of play. Oh, these boys can play, I tell you what. That was lovely to watch, but not quite working out for CBC. They still do have the ball and they're pressing forward, keeping it nice and close round the fringes here. Our CBC breaking the gain line ever so slightly but an inch forward is better than 1,000 sideways. Some coaches would say but here they go rolling forward You're approaching the 50 meter line now being told to leave the ball. Our, C our Hillcrest and CBC keep coming now with a bit of expansive wide rugby and here they go. Hillcrest standing strong in defense. Tino this is good rugby isn't it? Yeah it's good rugby uh, seeing uh, the teams uh contesting very well and playing good rugby a kick from cbc oh me. an error there by you and they just want to keep that ball spread it there's an overlap their numbers out wide oh. But he decides Knock to pass it a bit too late maybe he needed to look up a bit They've earlier there. An advantage They've got a pin-out advantage. Uh, they've got a pin-out advantage and they opted for a scrum in the five meter uh, of Eucharist. 
So CBC not too disappointed because they do have the ball again. And it's just another opportunity for them to mount even more pressure on uh, Hillcrest. Scrum time. CBC with the put-in. Can they get a good clean ball here? They do. Eighth man breaks eight blind. Man break. Oh, too easy, Tino. Too easy. Yeah, too easy for the eighth man. Uh, and he scores a try. It's now 10 points on the board to uh, CBC. Eucharist yet to score with a conversion yet to come. Yeah, I think uh, the blind side flanker there probably had his head down, didn't see what was happening. And it was as easy as you like for number eight. Um, very, very easy try. That uh, Tiva Pasi. Cuthbert who scores the second try of this game and it is Ethan Ferguson again who's going to try and add the extras here to take it uh, to 12 points to nil can he do it this time Ethan Cuthbert this time he drags uh -oh. it uh, down the other side of the pole so maybe the third kick you'll straight through the middle of the but it is CBC leading Hillcrest 10 points to nil in the first half of this encounter, Tino. Yes, uh, Ukris being outclassed, out outclassed by CBC uh, here at St. John's College at the Pure Drop uh, Derby Day Festival. Yep, uh, Hillcrest uh, like the body language, they're jogging back to the halfway line. They still believe they can uh, make a comeback in this game. Interesting, grab a kick there. And it worked out perfectly for them because, because CBC have knocked it on, so not a bad result here. Yeah, not a bad result. A clever, a clever kickoff kick uh, from from Eucharist there. So it is scrum down. Hillcrest put in. It's two from the ten in the CBC half. So Hillcrest put it in and they get the full arm penalty. And guess oh. what progress Matenda does? He takes it quickly again, but this and time he, he loses it. it. Yeah, he knocks it and uh, CBC get an advantage. And oh, just breaking gain line every time they go uh, forward, uh, CBC. They join up with the back line now. It tries a little dink there, uh, but uh, works out quite nicely because they do have the ball back. Hillcrest knocking on, uh, offloaded on the ground there by CBC as they keep pressing forward again around the fringes there. Yeah, they are now using their forwards more. They're just trying to suck up as much as they can yeah, before they send it out wide. Very good tactic that's used by many teams around the world just to keep your opposition guessing. And now they do send it wide. Will we see another kick? No, there's a run pass. He fakes, he shows, oh. he goes. And he's looking for help inside. Dummy, but he needs to let it go at some point yeah, because he can't make it to the line with three defenders around him. But it's worked out nicely. It is a full-arm penalty. CBC well in charge of this contest, you know. Yes, CBC well in charge. And good run from number 12 and a quick tap. Oh, 
So still going forward, being patient. They have mastered this patience game, have CBC. No pressure. They just want to keep sending it forward, keeping continuity, keeping possession of the ball. Has it been stolen? No, it hasn't by Hillcrest. Now they look to go out wide. I like to see this back line in action. A huge overlap, but they cut in and they it's score a try. Nice call. CBC, CBC make it 15. Imagine with an overlap, Tino, you decide to cut back in and just still score the try. I mean, doesn't get better than that, doesn't it? Yeah, it uh, doesn't it get any better than that. Uh, some brilliance from the from the young boys. Uh, some good decision making. Uh, seeing the space and uh, taking the points. But in a, in a, in a tighter contest, uh, Tino, you actually do need to exploit the space out wide because cutting back in with a team that defends well enough, you'll be pinned. You won't be able to score those five pointers. So I think in this game, their coach will want them to actually play it out wide. This time, he gets an easy kick right in front. And what does he do? He misses. He misses. Oh, my word. I thought that was straight through the middle. <laughs> it, anyway. was very, it was very easy to, 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 sc to score than to miss. <laughs> But I don't know how he missed. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Uh, he missed that kick. Oh, well. <laughs> the score remains 15 points to nil in favor of CBC, who have been asking all the questions in this first half, and Hillcrest so far have not managed to answer any of them. Yes, uh, they are still yet to score, still yet to, to show us some good rugby. Yeah, CBC are an absolutely well-organized team, well-coached, well-drilled so far. That's what this first half has been telling us, Tino. And uh, like we mentioned earlier, they did go on tour. They were at that Krugersdorp tournament, which many other Zimbabwe schools were. And what is he going to do? He's going to pass it out to his um, counterpart there. Oh, just oh. look look at the brilliance. He's got help inside. He decides not to pass. That's one area of their oh. game that God they pass. do need to play. I mean, it's the glory that they want, isn't it? At the end of the, the day, these boys. But it is a team effort. Had he passed that ball, it was right a try in between the sticks. But he decided to hang on to it for moments too long, eh, Tino? Yeah, he decided to, to hold on to the ball and become too selfish. I think uh, if he had passed the ball, they could have uh, punished uh, Ukraine. So instead uh, of them being 20 points up, it's a scrum down to Hillcrest just yes. because of uh, bad game decisions there. Um, I mean, we could be saying a different story had he broken that tackle and scored, uh, but uh, in that game a situation as they get awarded a penalty, uh, Hillcrest, and again, they decide to play it quickly. Not too sure that's the greatest uh, decision, yeah, but it's working out for them and they've got a free run there. Lovely interplay from the backs. It is the winger now. Oh, ho, ho. excuse oh. me. Where are you <laughs> going? Big, He's met with. Big hit there from CBC and oh. it's a lane out. I'll tell you what, Tino, I'm much happier sitting here in the commentary box. I wouldn't want to get tackled like that. Yeah, it's very, very, very bad to be tackled like that. Yeah. Oh. You'll feel it. Oh, good tackle technique. Sends him into touch. But he's back up on his feet. Eh? He's up and he's uh, back in play. These boys are tough. Eh? Yeah, these boys are tough. Uh, they are tough and strong. Huh? Let's see how the line out goes. Oh, CBC won the line out and they are now going to attack. Oh, he kicks it. Sends a bomb. And oh, it's a knock backwards. Knock back. It's play on. Oh, and oh then, then the knock on came. Knock on. All right, so an infringement there gives the ball back to Hillcrest. And Progress Matenda will be putting this ball in. Progress is, a, you know, as you expected of scrum offs. He's a feisty player. He takes the quick taps. He's got a good pass on him. And uh, Hillcrest working their way up field now. What a beautiful day here in Harare, Zimbabwe. And what a beautiful rugby we have. Ah, Progress Matenda throws the little dummy. I tell you what, this guy can play, Tina. Yes. 
Oh, he considered penalty and CBC takes it, takes it quick. They seem to want to just keep the ball alive. Eh? <laughs> I think when do you just relax, slow down, kick it into touch, gain some territory? It's a valuable part of the game, isn't it? Yes, it's a valuable play, uh, play of the game. And uh, now they've decided to kick and... Doesn't find touch. Doesn't Does find the CBC touch fly off? CBC. Oh! Has he knocked it on? No. Backwards, says Precious Pazani. So it's play on here from CBC. Going down the left side. Let's it go. Let's it go in contact. Let's it go. But this time, let's it go into touch. So. Not combining nicely there are CBC, but both sides, Tino, wanting to play this free-flowing, uh, keeping the ball alive. Yes, they are playing it very well. And uh, you, Chris, they are just not up to that uh, that type of play. I used, them, I used to know them playing. Uh, I'm, I'm very disappointed, I must say. I'm very disappointed with you, Chris, today. Uh, they are not uh, playing uh, to what I used to know them playing. Yeah, but uh, it is pre-season, isn't it? So they do have time. Yeah, they do have time. And fix these. Yeah, they do have time to go and uh, revisit their mistakes and uh, come back stronger into the season. Talking about strong, that was a strong carry there from Hillcrest. But instead of setting the ball up, he passed it straight into You get the ball back and CBC sees the good going forward, aren't they? And it's a try. It's good to watch, isn't it? Yeah, good to watch uh, this kind of good rugby. Uh, CBC now 20 points on the board. Eucharist yet to score. You know, if I was to describe uh, CBC's play in this first half, one word comes to mind. They're very organized. They've played yes. some very organized rugby. Yeah, they are very organized and they've got uh, a little bit of structure and it's paying them off because they are scoring points. You know what? My, my heart just gets filled with joy when I see more schools playing good rugby and competing at such a stage. It just fills me up with joy and I'm sure it does you too, Tina. Yes, it, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy and excited to see these guys playing some uh, good rugby uh, and having more games because in my days uh, we didn't get uh, this kind of uh, privilege to play more games and having this uh, kind of uh, um, uh, derby day uh, which we which has got uh, more competitive games than the the the, the Kotko because I I played uh, Kotko three years from 2011 to 2013. Mm. Then played Jerry Body in 2014. Uh, we never had that uh, much of games because we used to only play uh, the festival and then the season is over. Yep, and uh, tell you what, it's not over here because CBC just keep mounting the pressure on Hillcrest and. It's another oh, show and go. Good, good speed, good agility. He puts a little kick in. Don't tell me this is going to work out. Oh, my word. CBC just adding to the excitement here at the Derby Day Festival. How was that little dink through the cap there? It didn't work out, but wow, that is good rugby. It didn't work out, but uh, they've got an advantage of a penalty. Uh, there was no arms they used uh, uh, on the arriving player. I think it's number nine from CBC who was... Uh, tackled using the hands. Organizers of this tournament to give them um, uh, a tougher opposition next year, so I wouldn't be surprised next year's program seeing CBC taking on Lemagandi or Churchill or maybe even St. John's. Yes, uh, next year we're going to see some changes in, in these fixtures, but I also think. Uh, it, the results of the of the schools league will also determine who will play who next year. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. They might they might play good rugby here today and then uh, play some uh, ordinary rugby in ordinary the season. Ordinary rugby in the season. 
Yep, but nothing looks ordinary about the CBC side, I tell you what, Tino. And were they behind the kicker? No, they weren't. So, in front of yeah, the kicker, not they still have got an advantage. Uh, Precious is going for the advantage. This first half to an end. Um, CBC comfortable with the 20 point lead here over the boys from. And they score a very good try to finish off the first half. 25 points to nil with the kick to come, Tino. How good was that try? Yeah, the, the, the try was good and a very clever run from, from the forwards. They, uh, it's very interesting how this CBC are uh, using their forwards more, more than their back line. Yep, it is. I'll tell you one area of CBC play that has not been organized is their kicking. They have not managed to, to, to get any uh, conversions in, and they've had a few in this position right in front of the poles. So their kicking needs to, to improve. Um, but I uh, hope I haven't put the commentator's curse on him. But uh, I have a feeling he will slot this one right through to make it 27. <laughs> he 27. does. 27. <laughs> they've changed their kicker. <laughs> Yep, so half time, and it is CBC 27, Hillcrest 0. Join us for the second half soon.
this and also uh, so many referees. He's one of the best. Oh, my goodness. CBC are getting this crowd onto their feet. I mean, yes. I'm about to stand up and cheer for them, but I can't because I'm in the commentary box, Tina. Yeah, sure, sure. Can't stand up and cheer for them <laughs> as we are on the commentary box. But oh. they are playing very, very good rugby. And they deserve yes, the cheers, they don't defend. they? That's uh, an eighth man running like a winger. And he gets a little goosey and he yes. puts it down. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh Christian my goodness. Brothers College from Bulawayo. Are playing. I've got my man of the match today. That number eight uh, is very good and is more offensive. And he has played very, very good rugby. Yep, uh, CBC, you might want to follow their season because they have made a statement here. They are looking good and I'll just love, as I said earlier, to see and hear of more teams that are playing competitive rugby around Zimbabwe. Brilliant. Yes, uh, they are very brilliant today and they've made a main, uh, an interesting statement. So it is 39 points to seven with the kick to come. So he gets this kick over, they get into the 40s. Tino, and this comes after we were just praising Hillcrest after scoring that try and maybe they're back and they can try and work their way back into this game. And then bang, CBC said, no, nah, the commentators, you know, you don't know us. <laughs> we are about to add even more misery to these boys. This time though, the kick falls well short and the score remains 39. Hillcrest can still finish this game um, well, if they do keep putting pressure and wanting to add to the seven points that they've scored, you know. So the restart by Hillcrest, does it go 10? Yep, it did go 10. CBC have regathered from the knock-on. It's been stripped away from them and that'll be a line-out. And it'll be a CBC button. You won't get away with that one with Precious. <laughs> you won't get away with a lot. Yeah, yeah, you won't get away with a lot with, with, with Precious. Karen Rich is one of the best referees in Africa. Yeah, she's one of the... Uh, recently, she was uh, officiating at at the World Challenger Series in Stellenbosch, South Africa, uh, the past two weekends. And also with talent at the Bath Trophy in Kenya. And he also uh, did his uh, level three. She is indeed a, a very good referee. And the line out not claimed. Oh, good run from uh, Hillcrest, but they lost it, intercepted by CBC. Oh, CBC won a penalty.
CBC played down the left side. Fly half again, trying to put a little kick through, but doesn't work out. Accidental obstruction. They say play on, no problem there. Here come Hillcrest. Good front football there. And they get the full-on penalty. Not supporting your body weight, says Precious Pazani. It's going to be taken quickly. He taps it. And he's met with a, a good tackle there. They keep going backwards. Oof. Excuse me, please sit down. I think that's what the crowd are cheering for. <laughs> oh, penalty. Not released. It's not nice when it happens right in front of the crowd. Yeah. When you get handed off and uh, you land on your, on your bump. <laughs> I think he needs to pass the ball here. And oh, in the you know what? It doesn't work out and CBC so again to the boot that's not a bad kick at all tell you what there's pressure here on Hillcrest uh, oh. tackle off the ball yeah good call there tackle off the ball he had put enough pressure on him by right yeah didn't need to do that and unfortunately the player is injured but seems to be getting back onto his feet now which is good but uh CBC have been absolutely fantastic in this game. Obviously went on tour. They also took part in the Kruger's Dorp tournament. And uh, it's, it's done well for them because they are playing some very, very good rugby. And like we keep mentioning, Tino, we'll yeah. be keeping an eye on them this season. Won't yeah, we? I'll be keeping an eye on them. Oh, Not that right tap there. Yeah, that wasn't tapped. Just picked the ball. Oh. Put him down well. An advantage. But uh, that's not going to stop Hillcrest from charging on here. Full arm penalty awarded. Oh, player down. Oh, the medic, the medic is calling for a sub. Hopefully it's not that serious. and I would hate for any of the players to be injured and miss out because this team needs to stick together and play together. Yeah, they, they need to stick, stick together and play together throughout this season. Uh, and uh, we don't expect anything bad to happen to uh, one of the boys. And
Oh, ten big one. That was high and dangerous. Someone would break uh, his neck with those kind of uh, dangerous tackle. You are not allowed to play the ball on the ground. in terms of meters but uh it looks like they are going to uh finish the game with a difference of 32 points with 39 points on the board uh with eucharist uh saving yeah not a bad win a good day in the office for CBC boys. I do like how Hillcrest have just kept um, trying and just they haven't been just tried to hang in this game. Yes, the scoreboard is the, the he went on tour. They would have known that they were 